Good afternoon. I'm Earl Weiner, a member of the National Transportation Safety Board. Before I tell you about this investigative process, I want to say on behalf of the NTSB that our thoughts are with those involved in this accident, and particularly with those who were injured. The NTSB arrived on scene today early afternoon with a GO team to Cimarron, Kansas to investigate the derailment of an Amtrak train. This NTSB investigation will be led by Tim DePape, who will serve as the investigator in charge. He's accompanied by NTSB investigators in a variety of areas of expertise, including operations, mechanical, track, signals, survival factors, and event recorders. We're at the early stages of this accident investigation. We're collecting evidence, interviewing witnesses, working with other agencies to gather information. Some of what we know at this point in time, this accident happened at 12.02 a.m. Central Daylight Time this morning. Amtrak train number four, also known as the Southwest Chief, derailed near mile post 372.9 in the vicinity of Cimarron, Kansas. This Los Angeles to Chicago train consisted of two locomotives and 10 cars. Of those, the two locomotives and two cars directly behind remained on the tracks. The next two cars derailed but remained upright remaining six cars tipped over to one extent or another against the burn. There were approximately 130 passengers and 14 crew members on board. Minor to serious injuries have been reported. The American Red Cross responded to assist the passengers. This event occurred in the Burlington Northern Santa Fe, or BNSF, La Junta Division where the maximum allowable speed for this area for passenger trains is 60 miles per hour. The NTSB is an independent federal agency charged with investigating all civil aviation accidents and significant railroad, highway, pipeline, and marine accidents. We investigate accidents to determine what happened, why it happened, and make recommendations to avoid having it happen again. The NTSB has put together a multidisciplinary team to investigate every aspect of this accident. We'll be looking at signal information, braking, track information, train operations, and how the crew operated the trains. Our human factors group will look at crew performance. The data recorders on board the locomotives will provide us with performance information, including speed, braking, and throttle parameters. We understand the lead locomotive will be equipped with forward-facing cameras, and our investigators will examine the data as soon as possible. We expect to be on scene for approximately one week. When we complete the on-scene investigation, our work will continue at the TSB headquarters in Washington, D.C. We're working closely with the Federal Railroad Administration and BNSF Railway to gather principal evidence and key measurements to expedite our on-scene activities. We will be holding additional briefings when we have further progress to report. We will not be determining the probable cause of the accident while here on scene. We also will not speculate about what may have caused this accident. Now I'd be happy to take a few questions. Raise your hand and let me. Mr. Weiner. And Identify your uh, uh, organization. Jim with NBC. Uh, do you have any idea how fast the train was going and the condition of the track at this point? We uh, have just uh, downloaded the event recorders, so we have not uh, calibrated them yet. We think it was probably close, though, to the normal speed limit. 65? 60. 60. 60 miles per hour. Do you believe passenger. it was close to that speed? We believe, at this point, we believe it was close to that speed. And the condition of the track? The condition of the track, we really, is going to be a focus of the investigation. 
Uh, there's some indication that there was some misalignment, but we have yet to fully understand what that was and why it happened. Um, once we have a chance to look at the event record or the forward-facing video, we'll have a much better understanding of what the engineer train operator saw in terms of track line. Sir, ABC News, can you tell us anything about the actions of the engineer and how that may have contributed to what occurred and how his, his actions uh, may have saved uh, lives and property? Well, the engineer, um, apparently from what we understand, was quite vigilant, noticed that there was something wrong with the tracks, put the train into emergency braking early uh, in that process and uh, that was probably responsible for the train uh, derailment not being any worse than it was. But we'll, we'll know a lot more about that in the next day or two. Do you believe that action helped in the situation? We don't know that for certain, but uh, it is, as I said, there's every indication that the train was being operated properly. How often are these tracks inspected and when's the last time is these, this portion <laughs> was inspected? What organization are you with? NBC News. Uh, we understand from the Federal Railroad Administration that the tracks were inspected as recently as last Thursday. So um, it appears that the proper procedures are being followed for maintenance purposes. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Craig Andrews with uh, NBC Wichita. Um, are you working in conjunction with the sheriff and any other local authorities about an accident that happened at or near that same location with a vehicle uh, fairly not, not long before the accident, the derailment? We are working with local authorities to understand what might have happened. <clears throat> we'll, we have yet to come to a, a reasonable understanding, um, but we expect to have a better understanding in the next day or two. Do you have any reason to believe that accident, since it was on the other side of the road, would have even impacted the rail tracks? Cake TV out of Wichita, Chris Frank. Yeah, it's pretty much the same answer. We uh, are working with the local authorities to understand that. Okay. Have you been able to find that spot in the tracks that um, the engineer was talking about that may have been bent? I've walked the tracks. We've walked the tracks with the FRA, Amtrak, and BNSF. Um, and at this point, we've identified things like where the, the initial derailment occurred. But once that occurred, of course, the tracks got very torn up. So it's uh, the, there's a, an awful lot of pieces laying out there. You said the train also has some front-facing cameras. Can you be a little more specific about where those are? The locomotive has a forward-looking camera, which records the, uh, a running video loop. And actually, as an Amtrak train, once it goes into emergency braking, uh, that information is captured and downloaded to Amtrak. Uh, my understanding at this point is we have a copy of that video. We've not yet had a chance to uh, take a careful look at it. So that will help us a lot with the understanding of what the track situation was. Craig with NBC Wichita again. Is it your understanding that the event recorder gives basically a bird's eye view of exactly what the engineer was seeing at the same time? And how soon will you get a look at that to see if maybe this engineer potentially saved some lives? Well, there are really two recorders, the video recorder, forward-facing camera, and then the event recorder captures parameters on the uh, locomotive. Um, I think we've uh, downloaded data from both of those recorders, but haven't had a chance Because at this point in the investigation, we're trying to gather as much information as we can quickly, particularly any information that's perishable. Sean Sandifer, uh, Wichita Public Radio. Can you confirm uh, the number of critically injured and where they went? I really can't confirm that. Okay. That's really the information we have to get to the local authorities. Okay. Can you explain why the front would not be the rail and back on the rail? Well, the front cars are 
particularly the two locomotives are much heavier. And um, if there was a track misalignment, they would probably make it through, but in the process, kind of re um, change, the, you know, make the track um, alignment change. So it's a very dynamic situation once you get the, the heavy cars through and the lighter cars. Don't have quite the same track you can pull. After looking at the track and walking it, is there any talk of reducing speed on that track? We really haven't addressed that. There's no, no reason to believe that the speed on that track um, at this point was excessive. But we certainly will be looking at the track condition, the, um, really what the Speeds, um, if the speeds were filled. Several people I talked to today um, said that they were just nervous about ever riding a train again. This is the third sort of major train accident in the last couple of years. Is there going to be any sort of broader investigation about just the safety of trains and, and train riding across the country as a result of this accident? We certainly will be looking more as broadly as we can. Uh, are there systemic issues that will surface? At this point in time, I, I hesitate to say that there are any systemic issues which um, this particular accident is occurring. Overall, the, um, the accident rate for passenger rail is really questionable, quite, quite well, safety perspective. Uh, Austin Fisher with the 